guys, it's Leisha and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm talking about why I read romance novels. I recently have seen some videos going around and this is in no way, I'm going to preface this, this is in no way rant, ranting back towards somebody at all. It's not what this is. I saw the video and thought, wow, that's actually great video inspiration. So in anything I admire the videos um but I thought it would be a great time to put out why I read romance novels and why it's my genre of choice so I get all of the points that this lovely young woman was making and I understand why she doesn't enjoy reading romance novels but that's not the case for everybody and I don't feel like um, it's my place to tell somebody to read or not to read any certain genre of Christian fiction. Um, these authors spend a lot of time in, in this cave, their writer's cave, of crafting a story that they felt God is calling them to write. Yes, it might seem like frippery and like it's just shallow but if you actually dive deep into some of these romances you will get a great message for young women and older women alike I'm going to explain why I read romance novels today and why I love them and it will always be my choice of book again this is in no way oh you don't read romance novels oh you don't like romance novels you don't read anything. It's nothing like that. I just thought that I'm going to explain why I read them and as a young woman why I love them. I really hope this doesn't offend anybody. But I just feel like it's something that I should make and maybe you agree with me or maybe you don't. I just feel like I should make it so I'm going to. First I'm going to talk about the different types of romances because there are loads. If you're going to make a video about romance books or any kind of Christian fiction type of book I feel like you should be able to talk about and cover all of your bases because there are a lot. Um, Christian fiction has completely changed in the last five to ten years. It's made a complete turnaround from where it was in the beginning. Um, so romance novels in and of themselves have completely changed. Now normally when you tell somebody, oh I read romance, they instantly think of not super nice books, they don't think of clean reads, but they're out there and that's why I love to talk about romance novels and why I created this channel in my blog because I want people to know that there are romance novels out there that aren't nasty you know and again that's not saying that every Christian fiction book out there is clean it's not by any means every author has a different style every reader has a different style and taste so that's at the discretion of the reader and the author and their relationship with God if I read something and get that twinge of like mm, not a huge fan of this I will most likely set it down. I get to a point where I just can't handle all of the romance and I just, I know my personal limits and when I get there, I turn off and I shut the book and try something new. So again, it is all about the discretion between the reader and God and how they feel. Um, but yeah, there are loads. I keep looking down because all my books are spread around me. But there are so many things and so many different kinds of romances. So today I'm just going to touch on a couple that I have. So that you understand that romance isn't just shallow. And it's not just there and something to read to pass time. Again, I love cheesy things. I love romance movies and I love love and just the idea of it I love it so I think that's another reason why I love romance novels so much 
you have the chick flicks, you have contemporary retellings, there are mysteries, and there are English historical, temporary suspense, YA fantasy, medieval books, you have fairy tale retellings, YA contemporary, you have thin books, you have small books, you have western r historical romances, you have biblical fiction romances, you have big books and small books and series and standalones and there are just options galore that are there to touch any taste that you have and every romance is different. Yes, there are tropes. There are love triangle tropes, there are the orphan train tropes, small town tropes. There are just tropes galore. There, there are the rakes and the cads and reforming the rakes. There are putting somebody, make, having them make a choice to save their kingdom. There's quick romances and slow romances and romances that started way before you even read the book. And it all depends on somebody's taste. I read romances for a number of reasons. One is the main reason and more of I read for this reason. I read to escape the world. I read to get out of this reality of every day I have stuff to do and every day I need to get stuff done. So I pick up a book where a story is told for me and it's fictional and I get to fall in love with these characters who are fake and I get to take on this world for a couple hours or a couple days 400 pages worth of a different place and a different time and a different life. I pick up romance novels because there's hope. I pick up romance novels because love is true. Love is real. It doesn't matter if you enjoy romance novels or not. Love is there. Love is a thing that was crafted by God at the beginning of the world and I love seeing it in paper and I love seeing it compacted where you don't have to face the horrible things that are going on where you feel you look at this world today and you think love is extinct and you think love doesn't exist but it does whether it's romance love or love between two best friends as side characters. Love is within these pages and most importantly I pick up Christian fiction romance novels because God's love is writing through these pages and it's coming through these pages. Yes there are ridiculous amounts of tropes and things that are so fake and unrealistic that it can be corny sometimes and it can be cheesy sometimes but I also know I have never gone into these books thinking wow I'm gonna meet a man like this I'm gonna meet a hunky hero who's tall dark and handsome and opens doors for me and he's got an attitude but I'm gonna reform reform him and he's gonna I've never gone into a fictional book that way. I know that it's fiction and I know that it's not real, but it's a time to get away from life and it's a time to fall in love with these fake people. Yes, you fall in love with the heroes and you just like, oh, they're so good looking. They're such a great character. I like these character traits. But you also fall in love with the female role and you're saying yes I love her because she's strong and she's tenacious and she's great and she 
doesn't give up and she stands for what she believes in you admire these characters that this author has written and a lot of times the authors have included parts of their lives and parts of themselves in these books so there are traits that can be real and can be true but I think more than anything it's discretion if you go into a book and you get upset because he did this and you can't find a man like that and that's unrealistic maybe you should step back and reevaluate what you're reading and why you're reading love started a long time ago and love was created before we existed but you have the age-old classics of love and fairy tales no one ever complained about those we grew up on princess stories and we grew up wanting a prince and that's every little girl's dream to grow up and find their prince charming and no he is not going to be what the Grimm brothers crafted and he is not going to be what authors crafted he's going to be what God crafted and he's going to be what God designed for you in human form and with human flaws and human issues but he's going to complete you and he is going to be your perfect somebody and that's a love story in and of itself I read romance novels because I love love and I love the idea of hope for everyone and hope for fictional characters and hope for veterans and hope for police officers and hope on the range and hope for biblical characters and hope for the worlds that do not exist other than in our imagination love is the constant thing and yes this world <laughs> especially this world it's not real this world yes England is real yes Washington State is real but these worlds inside these books are not but the thing is through each and every through each and every book I pick up one thing is constant and one thing is true and one thing will always come off the page love love is real love love is everything there is one love story that if you don't read romance novels that's okay but I hope my hope above all hopes is that you read this love story and you believe in this love story and you love this love story the Bible is God's love story to us it God loved us enough to create us and create the world and form me and form you for a purpose and there are times when we feel like we won't measure up and there are times when we feel like that perfect man is never going to come along and we're not worth love in and of itself but this love story in this book that is true and living tells us otherwise the Bible tells us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made and God knew us before we were even created before he formed us in the womb he created love God is love the Bible is full of love stories you have Solomon who had a ridiculous amount of wives and concubines you have Adam and Eve and you have have endless amounts of love and you have love between brothers and the love that Joseph had for his family even in the midst of trial you have love and that love crafted the world and it crafted writing the Bible says that the words that are in this book were written 
by man. They were written down by man, but they were spoken by God. And I know way too many Christian fiction authors, and I know way too many stories for you to tell me that this wasn't him. Because I've talked to authors who spend years and go through trials after trials and doors closing until finally their book is published. Till finally their labor of love is born and their book baby is in hands of people across the world. His timing, his love, he sees the stories that need to be written and in some way or another something is going to pop out to someone. It might not be you, honestly. It might not be you. But it could be me. And it could be your sister. It could be your mother. But that little shred of hope that everything is going to be okay because they got out of reality for a minute and they chose to pick up a book in a different world. Books and writing and it's existed forever. You have classics, you have the Bronte sisters, and you have Jane Austen, and you have the Grimm brothers, and you have fairy tales. Love has always been a huge factor. Love is going to be in the center of everything because love makes the world go round. God makes the world go round. So why are we telling people not to read romance novels? Why are we telling people not to read love stories? Yes, authors can take them too far. And yes, there can be trope after trope of just, okay, I read this before. I know this. Then write something new. And if you don't feel called to write, uplift somebody, encourage somebody, and up uplift somebody. Whether you like a story or not, you can reach out to an author and say, no, this book was not for me, but I appreciate and I admire what you do because I know for a fact that this book is going to touch somebody else's life. Reach out and let them know that romance novels are okay and love is great and you will love them because you might not like the story that they craft or the cheesiness of the story that they craft and you might hunger for nonfiction and women's fiction might be something that's more up your alley where there isn't always a happily ever after because that's life. There isn't always a happily ever after. But I choose to love love and to love cheesy things and to hope and have an outlet for the times when I feel like life is getting me down and there's never going to be a happily ever after. Thing is, I read the back of this book. Whether this ha you get a happily ever after from romance on earth or you don't, we have a happily ever after that is never going to end because he loved me and he loved you enough to die, then raise back and go to heaven and build me a mansion and build you a mansion. I don't skip to the end of the book unless it's this one when I know we win and we have a happily ever after. I read romance novels because I love love and I love fiction and I love Christian fiction and I know, no, these stories aren't real. They aren't going to magically pop off the paper and I'm going to run into a Prince Charming that's everything I ever imagined. I go into that with those thoughts because I know fiction is fake. But this, God's love, it's real. And all in all, I read romance novels because I love love. And that's all I can say. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's kind of I had so many thoughts and I had so many things that I wanted to say, but at the same time I didn't know how I was going to say it or what I was going to say. All I knew is I needed to talk about this and I need this video to go out. So 
I let God guide me. I let him decide what I was going to say, when I was going to say it, and what to talk about. I had an idea. I broke through that idea. We'll see how it goes. Again, I hope you guys like it. I hope nobody took offense to it. It's a personal choice for me to read romance. I prefer it. I love it. Again, I know that fiction is fake. I know that it's not real. And I know that these romances most of the time are super unrealistic. But I love them regardless. And I love the authors. And I just... I love them. I, I don't know what more I can say. Let me know in the comments. I would love to know, are you a romance novel fan or do you feel like mm, maybe you shouldn't read them? Again, I'm not trying to tell anybody what to read and what not to read. That is your choice, your discretion, and your walk with God, whatever you feel. You can follow my blog for the love of Christian fiction .com, where most of my reviews are about romance novels. <laughs> and you can follow my Instagram for the love of Christian fiction. And all my other links are in the description box below. And I think that's it. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.